Hello students, today I am here to discuss with you the chapter Seeds and Seeds from your class 5 EVS book. Children, as you know, environmental studies is a science that deals with our daily life activities. In this video, you will come across many things that you generally see around you. So, it is going to be a very interesting session. This is an introductory video in which we will talk all about seeds. What is a seed? What are the different types of seeds that we see around us? What is there inside a seed? And how to make sprouts and what are their health benefits? I am sure you all love to visit the parks and garden in your school or at home. The lush green plants there fills us with lots of energy and happiness. The world of plants is so amazing. Trees and plants give us so many things. Can you name some of them? Well, here is a video to help you out. Why do we need Everybody please stay together. Today we are going to learn more about trees. Who can tell me why we need trees? Trees provide us shade on a hot day like today. Good snake. Anybody else knows why trees are so important? Trees also provide us with food like nuts and fruit. And flowers too. And professor, Many animals also live there, like birds, squirrels, and so many others. Not just animals, wood from trees is used to build houses for us besides so many other things. Very good, but I still have not got the answer I am looking for. Why are trees so important? Anyone? Trees provide us with oxygen that we need to breathe to live. Really, Professor? How is that? Our body breathes in oxygen and we breathe out carbon dioxide. Trees do the opposite. That is, trees breathe in carbon dioxide and release oxygen. In this way, trees make sure that we have pure oxygen to breathe without which we cannot live. Professor, is that why many people say that we should not cut trees, but plant more trees? Yes, it is very important to protect trees and we should also try and plant as many trees as we can. So now you must have understood the importance of trees. Let me recall it for you. Trees are homes to different birds and insects. Trees have a big role in bringing rain. Without trees, the climate would be drier and hotter. Trees provide shade and keeps the temperature cool. Trees give us medicines which we can cure when we are sick. Trees protect the soil from getting eroded. And Trees give us fruits and vegetables which we like to eat a lot. And last but not the least, trees take in carbon dioxide and give us the life-giving oxygen which is very important for our life survival. Well, when the trees are so important for us, have you ever thought that from where does these plants and trees come from? All these plants may be the big banyan tree or a small shrub. They all grow from a tiny little seed. Come, let's look.
song, the seed says that it has the ability to grow into a beautiful flower or a big redwood tree. Children, do you know which is the largest tree in the world? Yes, it is the big redwood tree and it is found in California. Now when you have known so much about the potential of the seed, you must be curious to know about the seed. That how does a plant grows from a tiny little seed? Well, let's learn all about this. You must have seen beautiful flowers around you. It is these flowers that produce the seeds. Hence, all the flowering plants produce seeds. Seeds are the tiny parts of a plant that gives rise to a new plant. Come, let's see what's inside the seed. For this, we will take help of some kidney beans. We call them Rajma in our local language. When the seeds are dry, they are difficult to open because they have a hard covering on them. To make this covering soft, we will soak the beans in water for an overnight. We will find that now the seeds have become softer and bigger in size because it has absorbed water. Now it's easy to remove its outer cover and open the seed. The outer cover that we have just removed is the seed coat. Inside we can see a fleshy white part. It is called the cotyledon. And there is a curved part at one of the tips which is called the embryo. Let us understand the different parts of a seed through this diagram. There are three main parts of a seed. The first and most important is the embryo. We have learnt earlier that the seed has the ability to grow into a new plant. It is this embryo which has the ability to give birth to a new plant. That is why we also call it the baby plant. Then we have the cotyledons. For the growth of the embryo, food is stored in the seed itself in the form of cotyledons. The seed coat is a protective covering that protects the cotyledon and the embryo inside the seed. Some seeds have two cotyledons. That is why they are called dicots. For example, the gram and beans. While some seeds have only one cotyledon and hence they are called monocots. Can you give example of monocots? Yes, the moon, rice and wheat are examples of monocot. Now that we have learnt about what is inside a seed, let's understand how do seeds grow into new plants. For seeds to grow into new plant, they have to undergo two important processes. They are soaking and sprouting. We will discuss both of these processes one by one. Children, have you ever seen your mother cooking your favorite chana masala for you? What is the first thing she do? Yes, she soaks the chana or gram for an overnight in water. Soaking means keeping the seeds in water for some time. But why is soaking important? Soaking helps the seed to absorb water and makes its seed coat softer and it makes the cooking easier and quicker. This picture shows the soaking of chana or gram seeds in water before cooking. You can clearly see the difference in the size of the gram seeds. After soaking in water, the size of the gram seed becomes larger because it absorbs the water. Can you name some of the things that are generally soaked in water before using them? You must have seen your mother soaking the nuts or rice, gram or pulses before cooking or using them. If we keep these soaked seeds in warm place for a day or two, we see some thread-like structures coming out of the seed. Do you know what are these called? Well, these are called sprouts. Have a closer look at the picture. 
are you able to see the thread like structures actually these thread like structures are the embryo growing into the baby plant but how are they formed well when a seed gets moisture and warmth the embryo uses the stored food in the cotyledon to grow into a sprout or a baby plant this process is called sprouting so can you define the sprouting process now when the embryo or the baby plant starts growing into a seedling this process is called sprouting let's understand it through a video through this video it must be clear to you that how a seed can develop into a sprout can you now tell me the conditions needed by the seed to sprout well there are three important conditions they are moisture warmth and air you must be knowing that every living being needs air water and optimum temperature for its survival similarly when a seed develops into a seedling or a baby plant all these conditions must be there for it to survive let's do some activity to see whether these conditions really affect the sprouting of seeds for this activity you need some chana seeds three bowls and a piece of cloth take some chana seeds and three bowls put five chana in the first bowl and fill it with water put a damp piece of cloth or some cotton wool in the second bowl now keep the same number of chanas in it make sure that the cotton wool or cloth remains wet put the same number of chanas in the third bowl but do not put anything else in it cover all the three bowls leave the bowls for 2 days and observe that is there any change in the bowls and record your changes what you observe in the table as given in this picture sprouts are low in calories and rich in many nutritional components such as proteins vitamins and minerals so making sprout a part of your regular diet keeps our body healthy sprouts increase the ability of our body to fight against many diseases such as anemia and even cancer children have a look at some of the health benefits of sprouts so when you have come to know of how to making a sprout and the many health benefits of eating sprouts why don't you take a tour to your kitchen and surprise your mother with a bowl of tasty sprouts children i hope you have listened and watched the video very carefully and understood all the topics so it's time to test yourself here is a simple worksheet for you just go through these simple sentences and if you face any problem just rewind the video and you will find all your answers we have talked so much about the seed and its different parts can you name the different parts of the seed let's have a quick recap of what we have learned in this video so far we have learned that a seed has a potential to grow into a new plant 
also we have discussed how it uses the food stored in it to grow into a seedling or a baby plant we have also discussed the processes of soaking and sprouting the seeds in detail in the coming part of the video we will be discussing more about seeds till then take care bye bye